Good evening everybody. Welcome back to Simple Art for Adults. My name is Erin and today is the long anticipated video episode 4, How to Blend Prismacolor Colored Pencils. This is another episode in a series about Prismacolor Colored Pencils for Beginners. So if you'd like to start at the beginning, feel free to do so. Um, or if you just want to learn how to blend a little better, you're in the right spot too. A lot of these methods are going to work for other colored pencils outside of just the Prismacolor. So feel free to stick around. I have a lot of different tools here that I'm going to show you today. We have markers, we have solvents, we have stumps, we have pencils, we have brushes. And we're going to go through all these different things uh, while we're doing this today. So the colors that I've chosen that we're going to use um, on our Johanna Bassford Secret Garden image that we've been doing um, are out of the Prismacolor 72 set. We have pink, which is Prismacolor or PC929. We have mulberry, which is PC995. And we have dark purple, which is PC931. So these three colors allowed me to get this effect right here. And basically this is just pencils, only pencils. That's all I used. I didn't use any solvents. I didn't use any brushes or any stumps or any anything. All I used was the pencils. Now I've taken some time and I've gone through and filled in all these little circles so that you guys don't have to watch me do all that. We learned all this in episode three, how to layer. Basically this is all I've done is I've just layered these pencils one over the top of the other until I have a nice gradient from light to dark. So the light starts at the left and it ends up dark toward the right. So this one I did is just pencils and basically what you're going to do is you're just going to keep layering and you're, you're going to gradually keep increasing your pressure until you see very little white space left and that's going to give you this effect. You don't need anything special to do that. This one you could this one I can't speak today. This one you can do with only pencils except here we're going to use the white pencil. So just the Prismacolor Premier White. And once you have your few light layers down, and you don't have to put a whole bunch, you can put as many as you'd like, but you don't have to use a whole lot. You're going to take your white pencil, and you're going to press down on it. You're going to really, really push, because we're trying to burnish at this point. And we're just going to go over the whole entire circle. And I do just want you guys to know that this does change the way it looks. It's not going to look anything like the circle above it by the time we're finished because this white pencil is completely changing the colors. But you can see that you can get it blended out with just the white pencil. So that's another option. If this is a look that you're going for as opposed to this one, you can use fewer layers, lighter pressure, and then go over the top with the white pencil. So that's a great choice. My favorite method of blending is going to be with the blender pencil. You're going to need several layers before your blender pencil is really going to do you justice, so be sure you keep that in mind. You don't have to keep layering, obviously, until you get this. Something like this is good. This is about all you're going to need. At this point, you just take your blender pencil, and you. I sometimes use mine dull depending on the type of paper I'm using. This is a really toothy paper, so I'm using a nice sharp blender, and I'm just going to start at one side, Again, I'm going to put some pressure on it because we're going to burnish it out and blend it all at the same time. Now, if you can see what's happening, you'll notice that the colors are all kind of mixing together. The blender pencil is pushing all the color down into the tooth of the paper. The Prismacolor Colorless Blender is a Prismacolor Premier pencil without the color. So it's the same material that's in the pencils. It's just doesn't have any color in it. And to me, I think it's a it's harder. It's definitely harder. So it really lets you get down in there. So that's with just a blender pencil and a few light layers. So that's pretty easy as well. These are, I think right now, yesterday they were like $5 for two. Now they're $3 for two. The price changes all the time. Um, once again, everything I'm going to use in this video, you're going to find links to in the description box below. I am an Amazon affiliate, so I make like a little tiny bit of money when you buy something by clicking one of those links. I just want to be transparent and make sure you guys are aware of that. So that's the other option that you have. You can buy yourself some of these little blender pencils and you can use those and they work very nicely. Another option is going to be the Prismacolor Premier Colorless Alcohol Marker. I don't use this very often. Um, this is for the <laughs> markers. As a matter of fact, I can't even get the tops of it off. There we go. 
So it's just a it's just a blank marker basically is all it is. You can see the top of mine's a little stained where I've used it before. I think I've used it once or twice and that's it. So for this, it's basically the same thing. You just take your marker and you go over where you've colored with your pencils. You just need a medium amount of layers for this. You don't have to put a whole lot of layers and it will work with just light layers as well. But as you can see with the marker, you also get a pretty nice little blend. Now, when you use a blender marker and you're finished with it, as soon as you're finished, you wanna take it and rub it on a piece of paper until you get no more color. It will stain your marker, it'll soak down in there and then the next time you go to use it on something, you're gonna get that color that comes off and it can ruin the marker. So you do wanna be careful with that. From what I understand, guys, this is just alcohol in here. It's pure 100% just alcohol, the same stuff that you can buy at the drugstore in a bottle. Um, I have seen videos where people have removed the chisel tip out of this marker, refilled it with rubbing alcohol, and just went right back to using it. Um, I've never done that. I don't know if it works. I don't know if it's the same kind of alcohol. I can't give you any advice on that either way. I've never taken the tip off. So if that's something that you want to experiment with, you can. Um, these markers are fairly inexpensive. I think they're about $3 and, and then there's some shipping costs that go with it as well. But there's a link to those below if you're interested in trying one of these. This is probably the simplest way possible that you could blend. Now we also have odorless mineral spirits and I know that everybody uses Gamsol. I'm just going to show you the cheaper alternative that I have. It's Daler and Rowney Low Odor Thinner. It's pretty much going to be the same thing. Um, it is it is a little stronger, I think. It does have a little bit more fumes than the Gamsol does. And I want you to I want you guys to remember something. Just because this says low odor or because it says odorless or whatever, it doesn't mean it's any safer than a traditional paint thinner. So I do want to be very very clear about that. When you're going to use this, remember it is incredibly flammable. Don't use it if you have a candle burning. Don't use it if you have pets or kids around. Um, be very, very responsible with this stuff. Don't breathe it in. You may not be able to smell it. I don't smell it very much. I can't really tell it's even open when it's open, but it does have fumes and it can make you sick. So basically what you wanna do with this, there are two different ways that you can use it to, to blend. You can use a stump or you can use a brush. So it takes so little of this stuff and it dries so quickly that you don't really have to worry about it. I know it sounds really scary, but to be completely honest with you, it's really not that big a deal. Um, it dries really quickly and as long as you use it responsibly, you don't have to worry about anything. When I say stump, you have a couple different options. The first one is the actual real blending stump and this is basically compressed paper. It's been pushed into a tight little roll um, and like I, it's hard for me to explain exactly what it is. I'm sure somebody can do a better job than me, but it's a solid piece of compressed paper. You also have a tortillion, which is a rolled up piece of paper, and this is actually hollow through the center, whereas this is solid on either side, okay? These are both made out of paper. It's just they're kind of, they're different in the way they're formed. Um, as you can see, like on this end, I have some colored pencil on it um, because I use these frequently. To clean these, all you need is some sandpaper and you're just gonna rub it. And I turn mine while I'm rubbing it so I can keep a semi-point on it. And then the colored pencil is all gone. Simple as that, so you can really use these things forever. Whether you use a tortillion or a stump doesn't really make any difference. Um, I know that pencil artists out there are gonna tell you there's a humongous difference and that I'm wrong for telling you it doesn't matter which one you choose. For this, I've, pers I've used both. I just grab whichever one is closest to me and use it. We're gonna go with a tortillion today because it just happens to be smaller and that's all I need. So for this method, you basically take your tortillion and you're gonna dip it into your odorless mineral spirits, just like so. Put the lid back on because again, fumes. And then we're gonna take it over where we put our layers and we're just going to rub, just like we would a blending stump. This does sometimes take a little pressure. I didn't put very many layers down because I know a lot of people are impatient with layering. So I didn't put a whole lot down. I wanted to show that you can blend these pencils out pretty quickly without having to put a whole lot of effort into it. And that is how your odorless mineral spirits are going to work with a tortillion. Now you can see that a lot of that color came off 
And that's why a lot of people are kind of iffy about using the stump because you push, you gotta push kind of hard to get it down in there because it's actually soaking into the paper on the stump. And a lot of people will also tell you that it's a waste of your mineral spirits because your paper soaks it up and then it evaporates. And to a degree, that is very true. It, it, you will go through your odorless mineral spirits a lot more quickly that way. So typically what I do if I'm going to use odorless mineral spirits or the low odor thinner, it's the same thing, guys. I don't know if I said that already, but it is practically the same thing. I've taken a paintbrush, and what I've done is I've cut the bristles to where it's very, very short because it makes it stiffer, right? So you want some stiff bristles, especially if you have a toothy paper. So the toothier your paper and the thicker your paper, the stiffer your bristles are going to need to be. At that point, what I do is I just dip my paintbrush into the odorless mineral spirits just like this. And then I'll kind of knock off a little bit of the extra on the side, just like that. And then I'll come paint it on. This is not going to give you the same uh, smooth effect as the other method did. Not by any means, because remember, we're not putting all that force into it. I use a circular motion. And if you run out, you just go back in. Sorry, all you see is my arm and my rotisserie chicken scar. <laughs> You just go back in, pull out a little bit more, and blend it out. Now you're going to, I know what you're thinking. Well, that looks like it changed the color. It looks awful gray. It kind of does at first, um, but it'll dry very quickly and it won't look like that anymore. And this isn't a perfect blend by any means. None of these are. These are all a little bit sloppy. Um, like I said, this isn't something I'm trying to do to, to make a masterpiece work of art. I'm just trying to show you the options that you have when it comes to blending out all your Prismacolor colored pencils. And so you have several. Um, by far, the best way is going to be to use um, to use your pencils by themselves and to just burnish them out. If you wanted a more diluted, concentrated, uh, pastel look almost, you could use your white pencil. The blender pencil is my favorite. If I'm going to do something besides pencils, I'm going to use the blender pencil. The blender marker, it works okay. Um, it tends to work better on toothier paper. If you get it on a smoother paper, it just kind of smears your colors around a little bit. Um, for the odorless mineral spirits, it works better on the stump, but it does lift a lot of your color. And it is going to absorb your uh, odorless mineral spirits a lot more quickly, so you're going to go through it faster. With the brush, you're going to get a lot more of the odorless mineral spirits actually down onto your paper, but it doesn't blend the colors out quite as nicely, and it does take some time to dry. Now, just to go over the differences in these that I haven't talked about yet. Okay, once your paper's burnished like this, once you have all the white space filled and you shove down with your pencil, whether you do it this way or this way, you're not going to get any more layers on there. You might with Prismacolor, just because they're so soft, you might be able to go back on and get a little bit more color on it, but if it's any other pencil other than a Prismacolor, it's probably not going to happen. So this is always going to be your last step. Once you've done this, you are pretty well done. Nothing else is going to happen. With a blender pencil, it depends on how hard you press down on it. If you press down on it hard enough to burnish, then that should be the last thing that you do. If you're going to use it with light pressure just to slightly blend something out, then you can go back over it with more pencils. Again, it's the same thing as your regular Prismacolor colored pencil. It just doesn't have any color in it. With the blender marker that's alcohol, once you've put light layers down and then you've gone over it with your marker, you can come back in here and you can go back in it. See, I'll show you. You just go right back over it, just like that and you can continue to add more color, which is why the blender marker and the odorless mineral spirits are huge with a lot of colorists because they want to go back in when they're finished and add more pencil. And in fact, if you watch a lot of the um, artists on YouTube who actually do colored pencil art, like Lisa Lockery, I, she's an amazing artist if you guys haven't checked her out. She'll actually go through and blend a lot of stuff with odorless mineral spirits just so she can go back and add more layers to it when she's finished because she knows she's not done with that yet. She's going to blend it out really good. Then she's going to go on to another area of her image and let that part dry. Then she's going to come back and put more color on top. So I really hope, guys, that with all of this that you have learned about how Prismacolor pencils will blend with all of these different tools. It really is pretty simple. I'm gonna say the easiest one, if you just want the simplest, most, the, the best way to blend 
is going to be this. This is by far the simplest. It's also kind of tricky to get used to, and it does get a little uh, tedious to clean it after every single color you use it on. And you have to be quick about it because that wax will sit on there and it'll stain your marker, and you definitely don't want that. My favorite's the blender pencil if I'm going to use anything at all. To be completely honest with you, I usually don't. Usually this is my preferred method. This is typically how I'm going to do it. So now that you know all these things, you have your choice when it comes to your um, secret garden. So let's take a look and we'll, I'm going to use the blender pencil technique in mine, I do believe. So I'm going to go ahead and get that out and we'll do, we'll go back to the page we've been working on. And we'll go in and we'll do one of these flowers together. Now, I'm trying to leave you guys a little bit of creative room here, right? Because I don't want to tell you exactly how to color your entire picture. So we're just going to do this flower over here. I'm going to do the petals, right? I'm not going to do the stamens. I'm just going to do the petals. Um, I'm going to uh, not even pay any attention to these things being here. I'm just going to pretend they don't exist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the pink and I'm going to go over the entire petal and I'm going to try to be, I'm not going to be like perfectly even about it, but I don't want to go outside the lines. If I do, I'll just get an eraser out. I'm not going to panic, but I am going to try to be a little bit neater about it. So first step, just like we did uh, with episodes two and three, we are going to do very light handed layers of our lightest color on these petals, just like this. Now, if you guys want to leave these blank and do something else with those, then by all means do so. I'm just going to ignore them to make the, to make the whole process a little quicker for us today. Now I'm going to take my medium color, which is the mulberry, and I'm going to start probably about right here with a very light, very, very light pressure, and I'm going to bring it down over the rest of the petal. I'm going to do the same with the other petals. The first light layer that I do is mostly just for color placement. Just so I know where my colors are going to be and so I know that when I start blending this is where I want all of my colors to end up. When you get more experience with Prismacolors, you can probably do this without all of these layers. I've seen people who do it. If you've ever seen Claire Holloway color in a Johanna Basford book, she's a prime example of how to get your colors to blend together with as few layers as possible. And she does a very good job too. Um, but I would recommend starting out this way. You get more control over it. And if you make a mistake, it's so much easier, like I said in the last video, it is so much easier to go back and add more color than it is to take color away. So this method is a little bit more mistake proof than just going in with a heavy hand right off the bat. All right, so you guys are starting to finally see a little bit of color showing up on the paper now. More light layers of mulberry. And I'm going to pull it down over that purple I just put in there. Remember, like we talked about in episode three, by layering the colors over top of one another, it gives you more depth, which makes your images, I think it really makes them pop, makes them pretty. And then more pink. And I'm going to take the pink over everything. And then my next layer is going to be just a little bit heavier. Oh, I got outside the lines. So you guys can probably see it. That's okay. It's very light so I can fix it. I'll just go in with my eraser. All right, so now I'm going to go with my dark purple. And I'm going to start down here at the base of the flower. I'm going to use a little bit more pressure. I'm going to pull that color up. And the farther I get toward up here, I'm going to just use a lighter pressure. And that's going to allow me to blend it 
into the mulberry. If you guys practiced your blend or your layering last week or with the last video and noticed that you had lines, like you had visible lines between your colors, um, try to lighten your hand a little more where your colors are actually meeting each other on the page and you should be able to do away with that. Okay, now I'm going to do the mulberry. Toward the pink, I'm going to use the lightest possible pressure and then down toward the purple, I'm going to press a little harder. I better finish the rest of this up, huh? I was about to just grab my pink and go to town. <laughs> there we go. All right. And then the last layer that I'm going to do before I get out my blender pencil is going to be the pink. One more time with a heavier pressure. And it's just going to bring everything together. almost there and then once I have finished this last layer of pink all over the whole flower I will get out my blender pencil and I use this thing a lot so that's why you see the little purple foamy thing on there it makes my hands not hurt from uh, when I push down on it And then we're just going to color over everything. Excuse me, getting a little froggy. Just going to color over everything with the blender pencil. A good tip for this, if you um, really want to preserve your lighter areas of your image where you have like just the pink in this case, Start with your blender pencil at the lighter end of whatever it is that you're coloring and bring it down into the dark because it does move the pigment around and you can move a lot of your dark into your light and then you're going to be a little bit bummed out if you lose all your highlights. Almost there, guys. All right, and that is that. So now at this point, you have a perfectly blended tricolor flower that starts, it goes from pink to purple, and really, it wasn't all that much work. I do need to clean mine up, unfortunately, because I did go outside the lines. I am so, so used to turning my book around, whichever way I need to turn it, so I can get into the little bitty nooks and crannies and things. And when I'm on camera, I'm trying to train myself to not do that, so that you guys can get a better view. And obviously... Oh, look, I just scrubbed off the color. <laughs> it's okay. We'll fix it. There we go. Now, at this point, you have some other options. Um, I didn't push hard enough to completely burnish it, so I could take my dark purple pencil. And if you see, like, you see how these petals are all kind of overlapping each other? I could go in with my dark purple and then just add, like, the lightest, lightest little shadows in there. Just like this. 
just kind of outline the edge of that petal right there. I'm going to do it all the way around the thing, all the way around the thing, the flower. Let's bring it down to where the rest of the purple is. You don't have to keep going. And now you've created a little bit of shadow, so it actually kind of makes your flower stand out just a little bit more. Now keep in mind you can do this differently. You can do every single petal a little bit differently if you wanted to. Um, if you wanted to do the pastel effect, you could try the white pencil blending down in the um, in the little places where Johanna has drawn the, like, the little teardrop shapes. I'm going to go in and try to blend this out because I think I got that just a little bit too dark on this side. So I'm going to use my pink pencil and try to blend that out just a little bit. But there's all kinds of different ways that you can do this. And there's so many techniques that you can use. Um, usually I wouldn't even use the blender pencil. I would just burnish. Um, I would use a couple of light layers just to place my colors down. And then I would come back in with my pencil and um, just keep adding more layers. And I, I generally get to where I'm adding moderate pressure like with the second layer. Just because I'm used to the Prismacolors and I know what they're going to do. So at this point I'm going to call that flower pretty well finished. So the homework for this time, you've got several flowers going around the page. Um, you can go ahead and use whatever blending technique you saw here today. Just go ahead and practice it. If you feel like you need to practice on a piece of scrap paper beforehand, um, you can certainly do that as well. I, I don't blame you a bit. Um, generally, I don't ever, ever, ever put any kind of solvent in a book without testing it on a back page first. So if you are unsure of how your solvent's going to react, there's pages in the back of the book that you can flip to and check those out as well. So let's zoom out so that you guys can see what the flower looks like just a little bit better. It looks a little different when it's zoomed in up close, but when you zoom it out, you can see how the gradient is really, really nice from the pink to the purple. And it was really easy to do. So you guys can apply this technique to all kinds of different stuff. You can do it in your coloring books, you can do it in your art, you can do it with your, well, you can do it with like, even with Crayolas to a degree. You're probably not gonna get quite as many layers out of them, but you can get some layers out of them if you use light pressure. And you can do things like this because I've done it before. Um, guys, this is the end of learning how to blend with Prismacolor Premier Colored Pencils, even though I apparently cannot color tonight, and I am a sloppy fool today. <laughs> so what we're going to do to, for the next time is we're going to go ahead and color all these flowers. Um, you have the three colors I used. Once again, they're pink, mulberry, and dark purple. If you want to use different colors, go right ahead and use different colors. Um, these just appealed to me because I'm a purple girl. That's what I like. You can use a blender pencil, you can use a white pencil, you can use odorless mineral spirits, you can use anything you want to use, um, and I can't wait to see your work. Now, before we end this video, because I know that somebody's going to say it, so I'm going to go ahead and address it right now before it happens, somebody's going to put in the comments, well, you can use baby oil, or you can use Vaseline. Well, you can. These people are absolutely not wrong. Sorry, this is really crinkly and loud. These people are absolutely not wrong. You can use uh, baby oil and Vaseline in, to blend Prismacolors, and it does work pretty well. I'm not going to lie, it really does. Um, the only thing about that is, is if you remember initially how when we put the Gamsol on this circle, do you remember how it turned kind of gray and oily? With baby oil, that doesn't exactly go away. That kind of lingers. So you're going to get the blending effect, but you're going to get that oily leftover stuff too. And you'll have like bleed through on the back just like, oh, and I forgot to mention that with the alcohol marker, guys, don't go do that in your coloring books unless they're um, not, unless they're single sided because it will push that color through. It essentially turns your colored pencil into an alcohol marker and it will push the color through the page. So I'm sorry I didn't mention that. It completely slipped my mind. Just keep that in mind. Don't use it on like a book like this. Okay. Anyway, so back to where we were. Um, yeah, so you can use the Vaseline and the baby oil, but they will leave like oily spots on your page. And um, 
if you don't let it dry completely, you're going to like have grease spots on multiple parts of your book. And the thing about baby oil and Vaseline is that unlike the odorless mineral spirits, they never evaporate completely. There's always going to be some left behind. So there's not really a whole lot that you're going to be able to do about that. Um, I would recommend if you choose to go with one of the budget routes like Vaseline or baby oil that you take your image out of your book or you use it on an image that you print it out. And this way you don't run into the issue where you have greasy stuff all over your book. Um, I can't believe I forgot to mention that about the marker. You can tell how often I actually use the blender marker to blend. So yeah, that's my fault. I hope nobody turned the video off before they saw that. <laughs> I'm going to feel really bad if they did. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I do want to say thank you so much for tuning into Simple Art for Adults. Um, whether or not there's going to be an episode five, I'm not really sure yet. Um, I haven't decided if there's anything else that I feel like I really need to share with you guys as far as this goes. There's a little fly in here. Um, if you guys have any ideas, uh, put them in the comments below. If there's anything that you feel like about Prismacolors that you haven't learned out of the series and you want to see, um, go ahead and leave me a comment or if you're in the Facebook group, just go ahead and make a post or something there um, and let me know and I'll be more than happy to try to get it covered for you. Um, I do just want to say one more thing before we go. I received happy mail for the first time ever, ever. It's my first happy mail ever since I started YouTubing. And it was from Sherry. She's in my Facebook group. And she sent me Enchanted Forest because it was the only book I could not find anywhere. And I looked like in every single store around here. I was looking for discounted books. Um, I was looking at Dollar General. I was looking in clearance aisles and places like that. Everybody else found them all except for me. I couldn't find this one. And she found hers at a discount at Staples. And she packed one up for me and sent it to me along with this pretty little card. It was so cute and I like it. It really made my day. And I, I like where she did the stamp. So, Sherry, wherever you got the stamp, yeah, can you kind of, like, send me a message or something and let me know? Because that's a really cute idea to have one personalized that way. So, I was really pleased to get happy mail. It's my first ever happy mail, so it's even more special than usual. Thank you, Sherry. I really do appreciate it. That is really all I have for you guys today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. So more people can see it who might need to see it. If you haven't subscribed to this channel and you like things like this, please go ahead and subscribe. Um, and hit the notification bell so that you'll know when I upload a new video. Other than that, guys, that's all I got for you tonight. I do want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your nights. Thanks.